Welcome to the first screencast in dealing with binary data in Java for ICS 2.11. So what is binary data? Well, basically it's a way of, it's a binary numbering system where we use the base or the radix of 2 for our numbers. And we can have generic base n or radix n numbers and they're basically represented positionally by the coefficient times the base or radix raised to a power plus another coefficient raised to the base raised to the power minus one all the way down. So in binary numbers we have a base of two so the coefficient values are zero or one and you represent powers of two times their coefficients and of course the least significant digit is going to be a value of one or zero. Uh, there's the octal system, which is used in computer science, a little less so than the binary. Um, it's base 8, so your coefficient values are 0 through 7. And again, it's the powers of 8 multiplied by the coefficient, and you sum them together to get your, your decimal value. The decimal system is what we're most familiar with, base 10. You get 0 through 9, so you put the 0 through 9 and the digit the lowest significant digit, add 10 times the coefficient and you'll get the decimal digit. Hexadecimal is very valuable in um, dealing with binary data. It makes it easy to see the data. Talk about that more, it's base 16. The coefficient values go 0 through 9, then A through F. So we have 16 digits. So for example, the binary indicated by the subscript 2, which is saying what the base or the radix of this number is, is equal to, so the binary 1110 is equal to 16 in octal, is equal to 14 in decimal, and it's equal to E in, in uh, hexadecimal. Here are the numbers. The example of 0 through 16 in decimal and binary. So this is a good table to potentially memorize the conversion from binary to hex because you often see binary data represented as two hex digits to represent the byte of data. So you can see that decimal and binary to decimal is pretty easy. You just add up the digits um, by power of two and this is just a very convenient table to have memorized. So those these numbers, binary data, is all positive numbers, 0 through F, or it's all positive interpretation if we look at our decimal. So a 2's complement number is a way of representing both positive and negative numbers using binary. So what we do is we take the bits, and if it has a leading zero that's a positive number. So you can see where the 0, 1, 1 unsigned is 3 and 2's complement is also 3. But then when we have a leading 1 which is considered the sign bit that's a negative number. So 1, 1, 1 in unsigned is 7 but in 2's complement it's minus 1 and you just add 1 to get to a way to convert a um, one way to calculate the two's complement value is you invert the numbers and add one. So you would take the unsigned value, invert the bits, add one, and that's two's complement for the negative number. And you can see the two's complement works in the byte representation where we have eight bits. Again, the leading ones indicate um, negative a negative value so one one or ff is minus one f e is minus two so again the leading ones indicate a, the um, negative number so in java they support several different sizes of numbers so they have a byte which is an eight bit sign to its complement so you can have values between minus 128 and 127. Short is a 16-bit two's complement. Int, our standard int, is a 32-bit signed two's complement number. 
and longs are 64-bit numbers. So if you want to store data and you know the values are going to be small, for example, the range of your data is going to be less than 127 and greater than minus 128, you can store it in bytes, will save a lot of memory in your data structures. Um, but most times today we're not really worried that much about memory because we have such we have gigabytes of RAM, so it's not a big issue. But it is a good way to compact your data. So Java does supply bitwise and bit shift operators. The complement operator will take your byte and actually just flip each individual bit. So A3 complement becomes 5C. And you can see the binary digits, and they are just flipped ones for zeros and zeros for ones. And that's the tilde. It's the complement operator. Shift left is shifting the bits to the left and adding a zero in the rightmost position. So you can see our byte B, we shifted line, or byte S is B shifted one time. So we shift the bits over one. The leftmost bit falls off and is just discarded and then we add zeros so if we shift it three times we add three zeros and we shift all the bits to the left three times and you can see the resulting hex values we have signed shift right which in this case we take the sig most significant bit and if it's a one we continue adding ones if it was a zero we would add zeros so since b has a most significant bit of one when we shift it signed shift right we put ones in there so you can see lot s has a one 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 inserted and t has three ones inserted and again these numbers are negative if you're considering them to be two's complement unsigned shift right instead of inserting the signed bit you actually insert zeros so you treat it as if this was an unsigned number and you just add zeros as you shift it to the right. Sim it's a very similar process except for you're not doesn't check to see what the signed bit is. Bitwise AND operator. The AND operator is indicated by the table. Basically you must have two, zero, two ones or two trues. In binary logic you have to say false AND false or anything false and anything is false. So we can take a byte A, we can take a byte B, we AND them together to do C, and you can see the result where there is two ones in the A and B, there is a one in the resulting C. There's exclusive OR, which says it's OR, but it must be only one value, so one XOR one is zero. Same concept, again, you add, do it bit by bit, XOR, you get the result, and bitwise OR is basically the truth, or you can see the truth table, and if, if there's a 1 anywhere, it becomes a 1 when you do an OR, and so you can see the result of ORing A and B. So here again is a summary of all the, the operators, bitwise operators. You can have complement, toggle each bit, shift left, shift right keeping the sign shift right adding zeros and or xor and or so java has these operators that you can manipulate binary data normally we would consider using a byte array to keep our binary data so what does java have for io for writing binary data well the output stream class defines a write method that writes a the low order eight bits of that integer so it doesn't write anything smaller than a byte it just writes bytes to the stream so you can write a single byte or you can write an array of bytes or you can write a certain portion of array of bytes using the last method where you have the array and you say where do I want to start writing and the length of how many bytes I want to write to the output stream. Now that's wonderful for dealing with bytes and binary data, but what if we want to have a class that writes a single bit to the output stream? For example, if you're writing something like a Huffman tree, you want to 
record the tree by saying I want to say left right by indicating a single zero or one for your bit and then you can store the data as a byte but you want to be able to write individual bits to the output buffer and the Java IO stream or output stream does not support writing an individual bit just it's a byte as a whole so he's writing eight bits so we could create this bit writer class to do our individual writing we have to store we have to create a buffer to keep the individual bits because we can only write out eight at a time so we have to store up to eight of them and then write them out we have to remember how many bits we have in the buffer and we wrap the output stream that we're going to actually use to do the output so our constructor is basically we assign the output stream and then we initialize the number the buffer to be all zeros and then we initialize the number of bits to be zero so we have not stored anything in our output stream or a bit writer so we can write a single bit using the void write boolean because boolean is either true or false so if it's true we're writing a one if it's false we write a zero and we just call the write method that takes an int and we do it based upon the boolean value so we either write a one if it's true or a zero if it's false um, the write method that takes an int only writes the rightmost bit of that integer so it we mask off using the AND operator the all the bits except for the rightmost bit. So we only see the last zero or one. So if it's an odd number, it will be a one. And if it's an even number, it'll be a zero. And since we write the, the, the Boolean one writes this, so then we shift the buffer, because whatever bits are in the buffer, we want to shift them to the left one to make space for this new bit that we're writing into the buffer. So we shift it one, we then merge the bit that we're writing into the buffers and we'll use the OR operator. So if this bit is a one, the OR operator will mean, will say that the value will be a one in the buffer. If it's a zero, the value will be a zero. And then we increment the number of bits that we've stored in the buffer. And then we check to see if we have eight bits in our buffer if we do, we write out the entire byte to the output stream. And here's the flush method that writes the bytes to the output stream. If we call flush and we haven't got eight bits in there, we have to calculate a padding that we would um, pad with zeros. So we figure out how many bits we are actually writing to the output buffer. Um, we shift the buffer over by the padding and then we write the buffer, and then we reset the bits to zero and the buffer back to all zeros. So again, if we if the bits is eight, then we don't shift at all. But if we had we didn't fill the buffer entirely with bits, we then would shift it over to make sure that the bits are um, to the leftmost of the uh, output stream. So we don't have insert additional zero bits into the output stream. So a convenience method on the bit writer class, because if you just say, I want to write a bit, I'd have to call the bit writer eight times to write a byte. So we would create a convenience method that allows this bit writer to write out a byte. And so what we do is we actually just loop seven times, eight times. We pull that mask out for the byte that we're looking at. So we grab the value, figure out the bit, shift it back so it's a zero or a one and then we write that bit so we're going to call write seven eight times on our byte so we're going to grab each individual bit in the byte and then call write on that individual bit we could write another convenience method that writes an integer or a short um, well a short for, would be 16 byte or bits integers 32 bits um, we could do it we could actually do it by reusing this byte. So we could take the first, for a short, we take the two bytes in the short. And for the integer, we could write the four bytes in the integer using the write byte method. So if we can write an individual binary bit, we also want to be able to read in binary data from a file 
ORS stream. And Java provides, again, just like they did for output, they have input. And in this case, the read method reads in a byte from the stream. So we get eight bits. They return it as an int for convenience. Um, because most things are ints, and that's what most um, operations are looking for is an int. But it's really just the um, the byte, the eight digits, or the eight bits in the int. Now remember, since ints are twos, uh, two's complement numbers, if the byte is negative, that int will have a bunch of ones to in the first three bytes and then the actual byte value. If it's not, if it's positive, there'll be zeros. So because the int is two's complement signed, often, sometimes the int will have a bunch of extra ones in it, indicating the sign of the byte. We can read in an array of bytes and we can read into a byte array at the offset and length. Very convenient methods for um, reading in from a binary file. So again, if we want to read in a single bit from a file, we have to write our own class. And it's very similar to the bit writer, where we have a buffer that keeps the byte that was read from the file, and a counter that says how many bits have we pulled off of this um, buffer, internal buffer, and we keep the input stream that we're going to read the bytes from. So again, the constructor is we grab the input stream and then we want to fill the buffer with the first byte from the stream. So to fill the buffer, we want to grab the read. So we get the byte, but we don't, because it's binary data, we don't want all that leading ones in that. So we have to mask off the leading um, sign bits from that int that we read in. So we will get the true buffer, and the buffer will be just the eight bits from that byte that we read. And again, since the buffer is a byte, we just want the eight bits. But we do need to mask off that int to get the correct value and we say we have zero bits read off of this buffer. We then want to read, potentially want to read the bit as an int. So we get the int, which would be a zero or one. Um, so we get the leftmost bit in the buffer by masking by eight, zero. We then shift the buffer over one so that we've padded or moved the bits over and then if we increment the number of bits we've read. If we've read eight bits off of the buffer, we need to refill the buffer, set it back to the number of bits read to zero. And then we need to divide by 128 because we pulled off the um, leftmost bit, which is going to be to the, uh, the coefficient times two to the eighth, two to the seventh, um, which again, is 128. So we have to, it's multiplied by 128. So it's going to return either a 0 or a 1 based upon that bit that was that we masked off. If we want to read the bit as a Boolean, so we return true or false, we just read it as int and say, is it equal to 1? Return that Boolean. We have, again, a convenience method to read a byte off of our bit reader, just so that we don't have to con build up the byte. We do it ourselves here. So we, again, we create the byte that we're going to return. We then loop eight times. We shift the buffer over, and then we add the bit into the buffer in, in one at a time. And then we shift and keep adding the, or oring the bit into the buffer. And then we return the buff, the byte back to the user. It's just a convenience method. And that's all I have for this first screencast on binary data in Java.